Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Mass. Let's start today singing and praising God with hymn number 865. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hands will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. This is my Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the gospel of today, Jesus provides bread, food for the crowd, a traditional sign in scriptures that God cares for us, his people. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Heights of the heavens, peace to God's people, God's people on earth. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Son of the Father, O oh glory and worship, praise and thanksgiving to you, Lamb of God. Glory, glory. protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Balshalisha, bringing Elisha, the man of God, bread from the first fruits. 20 barley loaves and fresh grain in the air. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. But his servant replied, How can I serve this to a hundred men? Give it to the people to eat, he insisted. For the Lord says this, They will eat and have some left over. He served them, they ate, and had some left over, as the Lord had said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the psalm together. You open, you open wide, wide your, your hands, hands, O Lord, and grant our, our desires. desires. All, All your creatures, creatures shall thank you, O Lord, Lord, and, and your, your friends shall repeat their blessings. blessings. They, they shall, shall speak of the glory of your reign, reign and declare and your might, O God. The eyes of all creatures look to you, to you and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hands, grant, grant the desires of all who live. The Lord is just in all his ways, and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. You open wide your hands, O Lord, and grant our desires. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner of the Lord, 
implore you to lead a, worthy, a life worthy of your vocation. Bear with one another charitably in complete selflessness, gentleness and patience. Do all you can to preserve the unity of the spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were all called into one and the same hope that you, you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God who is Father of all, through all and within all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 You word our spirit, Lord, and they are life. You all have the message of eternal life. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and said to Philip, where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. Himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, two denarii, 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said, there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as 5,000 men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting ready. He then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as was wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, pick up the pieces left over so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled 12 hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people seeing this sign that he had given said, this really is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. The gospel of the Lord. In the first reading of today, Elisha, the man of God, feeds over a hundred men with 20 barley loaves, and plenty was left over. Throughout the journey to the promised land, God provides manna for his people, and again, the gift is plentiful. The second reading is our third extract from the letter to the Ephesians. Paul has already set out his understanding of the plan of God by which we become his adopted sons and daughters. Now he calls on his readers to live in a manner worthy of their calling. In the gospel, Jesus continues the generosity of God, feeding his followers with physical food after he had fed them with the word of God. Like the prophet Elisha, Jesus knows the people are hungry. He asked Philip where they could buy some bread for the people. Philip is pragmatic in his response. That 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. In other words, it would not be enough to feed the number of people. 
Interestingly, Andrew notices a small boy with five barley loaves and two fish, but he knows it is insufficient for the crowd. Jesus makes the people, as many as 5,000 men, sit on the grass. When then Jesus takes the loaves, gives thanks, he shares them out. He does likewise with the fish. The people eat as much as they want, and there are leftovers just as in the miracle of Elisha. And Jesus asks that, these, that they pick up the pieces so that nothing is wasted. Jesus did not share the disciples' sense of defeatism. He saw the small boy and the two fish as a key to feeding the crowd. The boy was willing to part with his loaves and fish. He handed them to the Lord, and Jesus was able to feed everyone. When we reflect on the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, we may well be bewildered by the sheer scale of it. However hard you try to work out what could have happened, you are left with something that cannot just be a conjuring trick or a freak of nature. But the memory of the event seems to have been preserved, not so much because of the wonder of it, but because it showed the great love of Jesus who was moved to work this miracle by the sight of starving crowds around him. To us, the miracle can serve to emphasize the importance of our efforts to feed the hungry and help the hungry to feed themselves. Just as our Lord fed, our Lord fed the hungry of his time by a miracle, so we must feed the hungry of our time by natural means. But the real point of the story is that Jesus himself is our bread. He is the answer to our deepest human hunger because he is, in that sense, our bread of life. He comes to us day by day in the form of bread in the sacrament of the Eucharist. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In today's gospel, we heard how Jesus fed the multitude with loaves and visages. At this mass, he invites us to be nourished with the food of life, which is the Eucharist. We pray that we be always receptive to the invitation and that we enjoy life everlasting at the table of his heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have dedicated their lives to feeding the hungry in our society, 
to housing the homeless and the refugee, caring for the abandoned and bringing comfort to the sick. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this special day for grandparents and the elderly, we pray for those who are blessed to have grandparents, value their presence, help them to live serenely and bestow on them the love, respect and gratitude they have earned through their lives of sacrifice, dedication and generosity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Summer Olympic Games in Paris promote harmony, peace and friendship in a world much in need. May the Games inspire our young people to compete and utilise their sporting gifts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As the school holidays begin, we pray that families come together to create happy, magically filled moments. May they each recognise the love they have for one another and create bonds that last a lifetime. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those that are suffering and burdened by pain and those that feel weary in body and mind. May they receive support, care and support to have a good quality of life and be restored and replenished in the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask our Blessed Mother Mary to intercede for us as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, grace Lord, Lord is with thee. Bless the Lord, our Lord, our Lord, and bless the fruit of our Lord, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, of God pray, pray for, for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. We take a moment in silence to pray for our own intentions. Lord, make us open and receptive to all your gifts and available to the needs of other people through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalt and praise as we acclaim. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending dying spirit upon them like the dew falls so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to get out Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, as spouse, 
We, the blessed apostles and all the saints of this you throughout the ages, who may merit to be quest eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take over the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take over the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take over the sins of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
On Friday, the Mass intention is for Father Richard Dunphy, our parish priest from 1983 to 1992, who died on the 2nd of August, 1997. If you would like to follow the pilgrimage in Lourdes, the Mass in the Grotto is at 9 a.m. UK time tomorrow morning, followed at 10 a.m. by the passage through the Grotto. In the afternoon at 4 p.m., the diocese will lead the Blessed Sacrament Procession. All of these can be watched online or on a smart TV on YouTube. On the YouTube site, search for Lord's Live. You can also watch them on the Lord's Sanctuary's website, um, www.lords-france.org. Click on the red button labeled live from the grotto. For those of you who remember Sister Brida, FCJ sister, she died July 16th, age 93. Funeral mass will be on Tuesday at 2 p.m. at North Road, Tuesday um, the 30th. Yeah, Tuesday the 30th of June at 2 p.m. at St. Joseph's North Road. She taught O-level and A-level chemistry at the college across the road. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, the divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that these gifts which himself gave us with love beyond all telling 
may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves, I shall not be of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of God who saves, I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I need not shrink before the terrors of the night, nor stand alone before the light of day. I shall not be